What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. I'm your host, Gilbron Bafflestone, and today we are having another episode of my Character Build series, where I put together creative builds to hopefully provide some useful insights. Today I wanted to talk about the Rune Knight 5, so a total follow-up to my video from yesterday where I proposed a Rune Knight 4 and Dowlock 1 for this Christmas one-shot that I have coming up, and I'm very sorry to have wasted people's time because it was pointed out to me that this build just doesn't work uh, for two reasons. One, uh, Jeremy Crawford has clarified that the bonus action shove attack of Shieldmaster must be applied after the attack action, which makes it pretty useless because you want to shove them before you attack to get those attacks at advantage. Uh, and even if it didn't work that way, it also requires the attack action to proc the bonus action shove from the Shield Master, and Booming Blade is not the attack action. So that's just not going to work. The whole build was, you know, around Booming Blade and Crusher to push them away and yada yada yada, and so it's just not going to work. So I felt compelled to fix this because again, I have to play this character, uh, but also because I wanted to present something that might be actually useful. And so I have reworked the character to be a straight Rune Knight 5, and hopefully this version is going to work uh, a little bit better. So let's take a look. All right, so same parameters as last time, evil characters taking on the North Pole with the anticipation of it being Santa, elves, reindeer, snowmen, etc. Fifth level characters, first level equipment, plus one armor or weapon, and one potion of healing. Again, I wanted to make my first marshal using Natasha's subclasses, since I currently play a caster and have only played that caster in fifth edition. And I also wanted to add that I want to stay away from the standard fighter tactics like polearm master, and great weapon uh, fighting, all of that. I mean, reiterating that isn't very helpful, right? Those are the standard tactics, and I would prefer to try and offer something a little bit more creative. So this is what I came up with. Name of the character is Bilbron Bloodhorn, going straight fighter, fifth level rune knight here. And I just want to point out that because we're going with rune knight, we have to figure out a way to leverage giant's might. This is their premier ability that they get right away at third level, and if you don't use it, there's literally no point of taking a Rune Knight. And so we have to recall this confers large size and advantage on strength and constitution checks. So to me, it seems clear that we must somehow optimize for shoving and grappling. And that's why my previous build tried to build around Sh Shieldmaster, which has a bonus action shove. And even though that's not going to work, it's still the same philosophy that we're trying to uh, use, which is to leverage that shove and grapple somehow. So to do it this time, I have chosen a different race. Instead of custom race, I am going with the Amonkhet Minotaur, which gives us a plus two strength and plus one con to begin, which is better than custom race, which is just plus two. Uh, and so we're able to get not only one 18, but also a 16 out of this, which as we'll see. And it gives certain abilities that are great for this build. You get a natural weapon with the horns doing a d6 plus strength piercing. You get relentless endurance, which I like a lot, dropping to only one hit point instead of zero. That's a really nice defense. And savage attacks, a little bit of extra damage on the critical. So the natural weapons is going to eliminate our need for unarmed fighting style, which would have been another option that we could take. And this opens up the ability to take blind fighting, which we are going to. Uh, the savage attacks we can leverage a little bit by the shove and grapple thing that we're going to try and do, uh, because the more attacks you get at advantage, the more criticals you get. Uh, and if you want, you can sub in a different minotaur type. You can, with another type of minotaur, get a bonus action uh, attack uh, when you dash, and a, a bonus action uh, push if you uh, follow it up with an attack, 10-foot push. So that can be actually a better option if you have an ally that creates persistent area of effect, 
So uh, it kind of depends on your party composition, but I'm going with the uh, Among Kit Minotaur here. That gives us the stat block as follows. We've got uh, nice physical abilities, 18 strength, 14 dex, and 16 con. And uh, our saves are a little bit better with active frost runes. For skills, we went with perception, athletics, deception, intimidation, and, and animal handling. Uh, athletics is necessary for this build, and then all the others uh, are nice in conjunction with the frost rune uh, at, at, and the other runes. So for feats, we are going with Tavern Brawler, which we will add at 4th level, which gives us the plus 1 strength we need to bring our strength to 18, and gives us a bonus action grapple that we can deploy after hitting with an unarmed strike on my turn. So that's fine. Unlike Shove Attack, which you want to go off before your attacks, you actually want to grapple at the end. So this is going to work with the bonus action can only be taken after completing your action rule. We will have a good armor class, a drop from the 22 of the previous build, and we're going with 21 here, because instead of defensive fighting style, I am going with blind fighting to burnish my terms of engagement a little bit. Uh, hit points are better, 49, plus the second wind. Uh, our initiative is plus two, not amazing, but uh, okay. For special abilities, we have the Action Surge, Second Wind, and Extra Attack of the Fighter. Again, we are going with Blind Fighting here. This is going to give us good defense if we are ever obscured, uh, and can create offense if there is synergy with an ally who can create heavy obscurement. I cannot use this myself, but I'm hoping that one of my colleagues is going to uh, help me use it. And even so, uh, I find it good as a defense. I don't like being helpless when obscured, so if uh, a snowstorm happens to come up, which I kind of expect, uh, I'm going to be okay with fight fighting style blind fighting. Uh, and then I get Giant Smite three times per day and Rune Magic. So my attack rolls are going to be plus seven with the horns and the shove and grapple attacks, plus five with my longbow. Uh, I will get the plus two on shove and grapples for the active frost rune and advantage on shove grapple with the active giant's might. So once I shove someone down and grapple him, he's pretty much stuck. I'm going to be rolling my athletics at plus nine and advantage, and they are probably going to be rolling at like plus two to plus four without advantage. So uh, I'm pretty much going to win that battle. My melee damage uh, isn't amazing, especially compared to the last one, around 19 on average of both of my horns hit. I get a little bit of extra damage on a critical. And just for sake of comparison, if I had taken Polearm Master here, that would be around 29 damage if all three hit, so about plus 10. But my defense would be worse because I couldn't use a shield, and it wouldn't fully leverage Giant Smite, whereas this build does and is good at shoving and grappling. So, uh, you can't do that with a pole army since you need a free hand, and so to me, it, it's not as good if you're selling out for damage, but I'm not. I'm not selling out for damage. It's important for me to have good defense, and it's important for me to be able to set up my colleagues. For range damage, I've got a longbow now, so, uh, you know, not bad. Uh, my runes, again, cloud rune and frost rune to get advantage on deception, sleight of hand, intimidation, and animal handling. And then that really cool reaction where I can divert a critical to an enemy and get uh, a really impactful offense out of a defense. And the Frost Rune is going to work with my shoving and grappling motif. So final build assessment. Again, I had to put the magic item into armor to get uh, plate mail, otherwise it would have been unaffordable. Uh, this build is intended to work with allies who also benefit from proning and grappling an enemy because they will also be attacked at disadvantage, they will also be attacking at advantage. Uh, and I am defensive oriented, so I did want to invest in a good AC, uh, and you know I prefer the imposition of conditions as opposed to selling it out for damage. But your mileage may vary. If you really want pull arm master, uh, you know, I'm never gonna say no to that. The numbers are great, it just seems a little boring to me. So in terms of interactions, we're okay with advantage on intimidation and deception. Uh, terms of engagement, we're decent. We've got, you know, plus two initiative and blind fighting. Our maneuverability is poor. I have no advanced movement options whatsoever. Uh, resource management is pretty good. Only have to manage my two runes and my hit points. Otherwise, all of my stuff is always on. 
Uh, efficiency pretty good. I've got the strong bonus action economy with a bonus action grapple. Melee offense is basically going to be shoving them down with my first attack. I will get that at advantage because of Giant's Might. Then they will be attacked at advantage, so I'll get one attack with my horns on the first round and two attacks each round thereafter. And I will get a bonus action grapple where they're prone and are stuck there now because they're not going to be beating me on the grapple attack. Uh, and that sets me up for future rounds and my colleagues as well. If it's a BBEG, now everyone is attacking at advantage and is attacked at disadvantage. And I have blind fighting, so if any of my colleagues have the ability to create obscurement, that's going to be a, a good offense for me as well. My ranged offense is going to be the longbow, nothing special there. Uh, defense is still pretty good. High AC, 21, really good for this level of 5. Uh, shove and grapple is a good defense because people will be attacking at disadvantage and they can't get up. Uh, the Cloud Rune to divert a critical, that's going to be sweet. I really hope that comes into play during this adventure. And Relentless Endurance, I love that. I mean, it's kind of like half a Death Ward, the good, the good part. And Blind Fighting, great defense if anybody throws a Sleet Storm at me, which I kind of suspect is going to happen up here at the North Pole. Uh, the weaknesses are in terms of maneuverability, uh, can't fly, no speed options, so uh, might have trouble with kiters uh, and kiting himself. Uh, and then the wisdom saves, again, are going to be a problem. Hopefully not too many uh, hypnotic patterns or uh, charm persons are going to be thrown my way. So that's it. That's the revamp of the character that I'm going to be rolling out for this one-shot uh, level 5 Marshall using the new Tasha's Marshall classes and avoiding the same uh, tired old strategies that the uh, spreadsheets say are uh, superior if you are selling out for damage. Let me know what you think. Uh, please point out any uh, mistakes that I made. I mean, I'm really grateful to the community who pointed out my error in the last build, uh, and it's a little embarrassing for me, but hey, what can I say? I uh, am, you know, still learning how to uh, build marshals and stuff, so, you know, my bad. And in any case, thanks so much for watching. This has been the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. I'm your host, Bill Brown Bafflestone. See you next time.